May Israel magnitude 4.4 earthquake is a sign of impending doomsday, a rabbi claims. Well, perhaps it's because of the fact that they had the Eurovision Song Contest Saturday night. Saturday, as we know, is the day of rest for all Hebrews. Instead of doing that, they were organizing all these international singers coming for the uh, song contest. And this is something that they did, did not make them at all happy. This is uh, by Rachel O'Donoghue on Daily Star. A rabbi has said a recent earthquake that struck Israel is a sign of a coming apocalypse. Well, we're also going to get into what our Lord Jesus Christ even said concerning the big, the great earthquake that will take place in Jerusalem. Now, concerning what this rabbi said, the tremor measured magnitude 4.4 on the Richter scale. It struck Israel on Wednesday and was barely big enough to be felt. Rabbi Yekutiel Fish believes it's actually a sure sign of the end of the world rather than a simple quake in a country that sits on a very large fault line. He claims to have found evidence within ancient Hebrew numerology that points it to being the beginning of the birth of the Messiah. The epicenter was almost 250 kilometers off the Israeli coast. This is what he told Breaking News Israel. The earthquake on Wednesday marked the end of the waiting period. It was the official day of the beginning of the birth of the Messiah. The entire world will be judged before the Moshiach Messiah. Nature will change, be less normal, because God will be guiding it in a more direct manner. Now, the end of the world prophecies have been coming back quite fast lately. Just this week, evangelical preacher Paul Begley claims NASA's confirmation that the moon is steadily shrinking is a sign of Judgment Day coming. And he said, there was a report out yesterday the moon is shrinking. Inside, the moon is like a raisin, and they're saying the moon is starting to shrink like a raisin shrinks. Now, let's go into the prophecies. The Valley of Kidron, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, is also called the Valley of Kidron. And we have the surprising sayings of Jesus Christ. He says, when you see these things happening, because his disciples asked him, what will be the sign of the end, of the end of ages? He says, when you see these things, know that it is near. Jesus Christ instructed his followers to watch for a sequence of trends and events that would culminate in his second coming at the end of the present age, and uh, we should be attentive to those signs of times. He sat with his disciples atop the Mount of Olives, also called Mount Olivet, on the east side of Jerusalem, gazing down across the Kidron Valley. We're going to go into uh, Google Earth, you'll see exactly where it is. To look at the magnificent, we were looking at across from the valley, they were able to see the magnificent temple complex of King Herod. And uh, King Herod had re, uh, he maintained and he restructured the, uh, uh, he renovated the temple. And uh, I think three years later, uh, the Virgin Mary was, uh, the first thing that they did was they fixed the Holy of Holies. That's what they did first, and then they, they renovated the rest of it. And uh, the Virgin Mary was, at three years old, presented by her parents to uh, St. Anne and St. Um, Joachim to uh, the League of Virgins at the Holy of Holies of the Temple. And that's where she was until she was betrothed to uh, Joseph. Now, his disciples were shocked and asked him when all this would happen, and associating the event with the time Jesus would come to reign in power and fulfillment of biblical prophecy the last days, they expanded the question asking, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? This is Matthew 24, verse, uh, verse 24, 3. And Jesus replied to his followers, disciples, to be on the lookout for a succession of developments that would lead to his glorious return in the end time. 
This response, known to the as the Olivet Discourse or Olivet Prophecy, is found in three parallel chapters of the Gospels: Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And just what did Jesus say would we be watching for? The birth pangs, beginning of birth pains. Jesus' prophecy commenced a series of trends referring to the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, 8, as began in New Testament times. Indeed, most had already been happening throughout human history, of course, but they would continue far into the future. Known as beginning of birth pains, women's labor contractions becoming more intense, closer together as she nears delivery, so she trends Christ mentioned, so the trends Christ mentioned would appear on the world scene great, with greater force and frequency as the end of the age draws near. The first of these initial indicators is widespread religion deception, that is, of course, heresies in the name of Jesus, false Christian ministries, Matthew 24, 4, and also when we read the book of Revelations, when we see the clouds coming to darken the sun, that means uh, the smoke coming out of the bottomless pit darkening the sun. That's, of course, uh, you know, we know that Jesus spoke in parables and metaphors. That has to do with heresies and darkening the sun. The light of day is, of course, the light of this world, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. And those are the heresies which darken his truth and uh, don't allow people to approach theosis, the union with Jesus Christ. Um, and in uh, Matthew 24, 6, Christ makes it clear that many wars would come and go and yet would not mark the end. That's in the same verse. And the next indicator Jesus mentioned was famine, followed by pestilence and disease. That's in 24, 7. And the prophecy cycles of war, famine, and disease, already known from the Old Testament, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And Jesus' words uh, word should be viewed not in isolation, but within a whole framework of biblical prophecy. His words are also provided pro provide the key to understanding the four horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation 6, verse 1 to 8. And he also mentions natural disasters. In Matthew's Gospels, earthquakes, the Greek word here meaning shakings of ground and the air, and as in storms, and in the end of this series, Matthew's 24, 7, but that Mark's and Luke's list them prior to the famine and pestilence. Besides being destructive in their own right, natural disasters like wars can lead to famines and pestilence. And according to Luke, Jesus, is, Jesus further adds, as part of the initial birth pangs, terrors and great signs from heaven. And we see that, of course, in the book of Revelation, chapter 8, which we will read together. There will be prosecution and proclamation. He, Jesus describes perse persecution and severe trials. Persecution, martyrdom, Christ, Christ's disciples came soon after the New Testament period, and we still see them going on today. And the final crisis, Jesus points out, turns to local events that will lead to worldwide upheaval. He says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near, Luke 21, 20. This he declared in conjunction with the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, Matthew 24, 15, and compare Mark 13, 14. Daniel foretold a foreign invasion of Holy Land and the placement of the abomination of desolation within the temple complex, Daniel eleven thirty one. And also, to Jesus' disciples ask him at the onset, when his statement about the demolition of Herodian temple complex would be realized, it's generally believed that this was accomplished in the Roman invasion. Further, Jesus talked about the Great Tribulation, that uh, no flesh would be saved alive. And this concerns all humanity, not just the people of Judea. Christ later refers to this dire period as the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world, Revelation 3.10. Mankind itself, annihilation was not possible in AD 70 when Jerusalem was uh, destroyed.
by the Romans, it has only become feasible in modern times with proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and discerning the sign of the times, of course. He says, so you also, when you see all these things leading to his return, know that it is near at the doors. Jesus chided the religious authorities of his day for failing to discern the sign of the times because they knew exactly when Jesus Christ would be reappearing. They knew exactly the day and the hour, and yet they did not recognize him. Now let's go to Google Earth to see where that location is, the Great Earthquake. This is the location of the Great Earthquake of the Mount of Olives. It will take place right here. This is the Mount of Olives, and uh, we'll see that uh, on Google Earth, the just the opposite the Mount of Olives is Jerusalem. Here, for example, is the Mount of Olives, which actually was a, was a cemetery, and it still is a cemetery. But uh, from what I have read, the uh, place where they used to camp when they were visiting from uh, Galilee to visit and uh, come to pray for pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the Temple of Jerusalem at the time of Jesus Christ, they had an encampment here. The Galileans would sit here, and the people from various other places of Israel would have their own little encampments here. And that's what they call the Little Galilee. Little Galilee. That's why when the angel appeared to uh, the disciples and told them not to leave Jerusalem, but to go to the place where Jesus told them to go to Galilee, he meant this Galilee, the Little Galilee. And uh, so that's where the big earthquake, here it is again, you can see it here. That's where the big earthquake will be, right here, right here. There's an indentation between uh, this, I believe, this Mount of Olives is Jerusalem, or, or the opposite. Let's see, let's go to the uh, Google Earth. I zoomed in to um, see that here, what is that? That's the Church of Mary Magdalene, okay. That's the Church of Mary Magdalene which is on the Mount of Olives. As you can see here, it's, it's this is on the slope of the Mount of Olives, and this is the Kidron Valley, and opposite we have Jerusalem over there, and that's where the Temple Mount would have been. Uh, this indentation, down you can't see it very well, but this is the indentation down here with the big earthquake. Let's pull out. Let's pull out, okay. That's where the big earthquake will take place. And uh, this would have been Little Galilee around here. Okay, and I'm okay, going to pull out again. Okay. And you can see this is all uh, basically uh, a cemetery. This is Temple Mount here. This is the area that the great, the great earthquake will take place. Also, we know that we have a huge fault line in Israel, a very dangerous fault line that lies in the area right here where we have the Jordan River. The river flows, all rivers flow on fault lines as we know, but this is it. This whole thing, we, we spoke about this once before, well, let's go through it. It starts from here, goes all the way up, and it goes all the way up that way. That's a fault. And it has to do with the Asian plate uh, rubbing against the uh, European and African plate. That whole thing there will, it will uh, split uh, during the, earth, the great earthquake that our Lord Jesus Christ prophesied, gave us as a sign. Um, that's what I wanted to tell you. Uh, of course, uh, it's not good. There, are, Israel is overdue for earthquakes, for, for larger earthquakes, because this is one of the most dangerous places in the world as far as uh, strike slip faults, because they give huge earthquakes here. Anywhere strike slip is anywhere between uh, over a 7.5 magnitude Richter, so you can imagine.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.